Duly Noted, a health and care podcast, is the official podcast series of Duly Health and Care. Each podcast features physicians or team members discussing groundbreaking topics and innovations that help listeners reimagine and better understand an extraordinary health and care experience. We know physical activity is vital to good health and a sense of well-being. And at the same time, there is always the risk of injury. Sports injuries do happen frequently and can range from mild to severe. On this episode of Duly Noted, how to prevent and recover from common sports injuries with orthopedic surgeon Dr. Brian Ward. Dr. Ward was formerly a team physician for the New York Giants and is now with Duly Health and Care. I'm Amanda Wild. Dr. Ward, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, Dr. Ward, what are the most common sports injuries you see in your practice and why are they so common? The most common sports injuries I see in my practice are ankle injuries such as ankle rolls, sprains of the knee, overuse injuries, which are usually lower body overuse injuries, but sometimes can be of the shoulder and of the elbow as well. And then at this time of year, I also see a lot of slip and falls on ice. And those can lead to, I guess, not sports injuries, but musculoskeletal injuries. So sports injuries have to do with joints and muscles. That's correct. And, you know, I usually subdivide sports injuries into two things. I subdivide them into acute injuries, which are more of like tendon tears or slip and falls, ankle rolls, things that happen in sort of in one second where somebody can point to exactly what happened. And then I separate them into chronic injuries where people have overuse injuries such as runners and they'll sort of get pain that slowly builds up over time. In those two categories, what are the treatment options for these common sports injuries, whether they're acute or overuse? So the first thing is to figure out, are they acute injuries or are they overuse injuries? And it also depends on the location. I'm going to start by going into a couple common examples and explain what we can do and what our role is. So the first pretty common injury that I see are meniscal tears in the knee. So the meniscus is sort of a rubbery bumper between the two bones of the knee, and there's two different menisci in the knee, one on the inside of the knee and one on the outside of the knee. Commonly with rotational injuries or overuse chronically over time, or sometimes people can't point to exactly how they tore it or how they injured it, but they injured it, you can get pain along the inside and the outside of the knee. Meniscal tears are probably the most common thing I see in my office, and unfortunately, there's no good way to prevent them. When they occur during sports, a proper warm-up is essential, but the most common way these happen is just over time, and people don't even know that they happen, and, and there's, unfortunately, there's no good way to prevent them. The treatment for them usually starts with physical therapy and possibly injections for the knee. But the key to this is figuring out what's going on with the knee, where the pain is. And when you come in the office to see me, that's the first thing I'll start talking about. How long has this been going on? Where's the pain? How did it start? And what prior treatments have you had? This is similar for ankle injuries, such as ankle inversion injuries, which are another extremely common thing I see in the office. And very infrequently do they require surgery, but you do have to make sure that there's no broken bones and other things. So when you come in the office, an x-ray would be done, we'd evaluate, and most likely you'd get you into physical therapy. I was just going to ask, what percentage of the time is surgery necessary? That varies wildly depending upon the injury, but most of the people who see me for sports injuries don't end up in surgery, and that's a common misconception is people think, oh, I'm going to an orthopedic surgeon, that means I need surgery, and the majority of what I do is the non-operative management of sports injuries, and so seeing me or seeing an orthopedic surgeon in general does not mean you need surgery, and the majority of the people we see never end up with surgery or any interventional procedures. What are some of the potential consequences if someone does not see an orthopedist and their injury is left untreated? It depends on the location, but for instance, instability of joints can lead to arthritis, can lead to some pretty significant consequences if it's not diagnosed and treated appropriately. I oftentimes see people who've had shoulder dislocations and they've had multiple repeated shoulder dislocations over time and it can cause tearing of tendons, it can cause arthritis in the shoulder, and it can cause other issues in the shoulder, which require more interventional and and harder treatment. And so it's important to see somebody and get evaluated quickly after those kinds of injuries to make sure you don't have long-term consequences. 
Same thing goes for ACL tears in the knee and for other injuries. And so it's important if you think you've got a significant injury or if you've had an injury and within a week or two, you're not better. It's important to see somebody and get properly evaluated because not everything goes away on its own. I don't know if it's because I'm over 50, but ACL and meniscus are not unfamiliar terms to me. Friends of mine who play sports have mentioned those terms enough that I know what they are. People of all ages play sports and participate in recreational activities, but what is the most common age for people to experience an injury? You talk about overuse, I guess that comes with time, and so it seems like older people would be more at risk for sports-related injuries. I wouldn't say older people are more likely or younger people are more likely. I see people across all age brackets. I see people from down to the age of 10 and up to the age of late 70s or 80s who have sports injuries. With the population now, people are remaining active for a lot longer, and that is a great thing. I very strongly encourage people to stay as active as they can for as long as they can through life, but one of the results of that is sports injuries. And so I wouldn't say there's a more or less common age. I've seen ACL tears in patients who are 10. I've seen ACL tears in patients who are 75. And there's no one age that it occurs at. It can happen to you at any time. So sports-related injuries can really happen to anyone, and they do run the gamut, affecting your bones or your muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints. Can you suggest a safety measures that could be taken before or after or both in participating in sports to keep bones and joints healthy? Well, I think some of the most important things are first a proper warm-up before any athletic activity. And I think that's one of the most missed things is getting your body warm and getting your body looser because we know that when you warm up your body and you stretch your body, you actually loosen the muscles, get a little more flexibility to the tendons, and you can dramatically decrease the chance of injuries as well as properly tapering up your activity. For instance, we know very well that in professional athletes, biggest risk of injuries are first during preseason or when they're first getting back into activities, and then second towards the end of the season when their body is fatigued. And I think one of the most important things is first, if you want to go play tennis, start with 20 minutes of tennis and then start with 30 minutes of tennis, but make sure you're in shape and that you properly progress yourself and you don't just jump into activities that your body's not prepared for, as well as you need rest. And there are a lot of people who you know, are very active. They're running or doing athletic activity seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. That's not always the best thing because the body does need periods of rest and recuperation. And that's different for everybody, but everybody needs a good amount of rest so that their body can properly heal and rebound from the athletics and the damage that you do during athletic activity. Because Anytime you do athletic activity and your muscles stretch a little bit, your muscles are going to be sore from their use and they need time to properly repair and regenerate and re-nurse themselves in order to be back to 100% to allow you to participate in athletics or activities as you want to again. Makes so much sense. Are you seeing any advancements in orthopedic treatments in the time that you've had your practice or seeing new technologies like there are in other fields that have improved outcomes for sports injuries? I think the biggest thing with sports injuries is we're becoming better at the non-operative or even operative management of them and specifically the rehab and recovery after injuries. One of the big things that we found is the faster you get people back into activities, the faster you get people into therapy and the faster you sort of progress patients doesn't always mean worse outcomes or that you're putting yourself at risk. And I'd say one of the biggest things that I've seen is just an increase in the pace of the recovery with both with and without surgery of trying to get people active and moving so we can get you back to either your sport or your life or job. And sometimes that decreases your chances of injuring yourself in the future. Now, there's something new called Dooley Ortho Now, a service that Dooley Health and Care launched. Can you talk a bit about Dooley Ortho Now and how it can help if you have a sports injury? Dooley Ortho Now, it was tailored almost, I don't want to say exclusively for, but it tailored really well for sports injuries. And for patients who have the Dooley MyChart application on their phone, they can schedule an appointment to see almost as if you were seeing an urgent care provider, but you can schedule an appointment to see an orthopedic surgeon. And we all have in our schedules designed exactly for that so that, you know, there's not the typical weight of maybe two weeks or three weeks or a week to see a provider. You can see a provider today or tomorrow so we can address these acute injuries and get people treated and get them back to their athletics and their lives a little faster. 
we've been doing it for about seven months now. We've had really good results and people seem to be really happy with being able to get themselves taken care of a little bit quicker and just know what's going on with their body and get back to their lives a little faster. Yeah. And you were saying earlier, timing is key and you get your most effective treatments the quicker you treat the injury. That's correct. And it's important to get seen quickly and oftentimes to get into therapy quickly or to to get on that road to recovery quickly so that you don't have muscle atrophy and we can get you optimized and back to life, like, like you were saying. Which is awesome because the benefits of sports really go beyond just health. I think one of the benefits of sports is both physical and mental. And I think the benefits of sports and staying active The patients who I see who do really well throughout their lives are the patients who, not necessarily running, but stay active through their lives. And so I think that's critically important. Well, thank you so much for your good work and advancing the treatment of orthopedic injuries. That's what I'm here for, but thank you for inviting me to your show. I appreciate it. That's Dr. Brian Ward, orthopedic surgeon at Dooley Health and Care. For more information, visit DooleyHealthandCare.com. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and check out our full podcast library for additional topics of interest. This is Dooley Noted, a health and care podcast from Dooley Health and Care.